It's a Monday. It's a Monday. Oh, oh, it's a Monday. I'm sorry. That's probably not the way you wanted to start your Monday, but you're not even starting your Monday with us anyways, because uh, we release this in the afternoon. Anyways, welcome back to another episode of Hot News. Hope you had a news-free weekend. That's the way I like to keep my life. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. I like it that way. And I'm going to stop with the bad song things, and I'm going to go into the good part of today's video, which is the sponsor spot, and then also, obviously, the news. But today's video is brought to you by Synergy. My friend, Synergy is the application that allows you to use your keyboard and mouse on multiple different devices, whether it be Windows, Mac, Linux, what have you. Use your same mouse and keyboard at one desk, and you can control another device on your network, like this PC over here, which I always have to make sure I go through like the UAC stuff that comes up at launch because I haven't disabled it anyways. Instead of having to get up and move back to that computer, I just do it all from right here using Synergy. It allows me to do that. And if you use the link in the video description, you can get Synergy for $29 with no subscription fee. Just buy the software outright. You'll own it. In case you need some SSL encryption, you can get the pro version for only $39. Check out Synergy at the link in the video description. Clean up your life. No KVM switches, no multiple keyboards and mices, mouses, Mouses is the apparently the official way of saying it when it comes to computers, but you don't even need to worry about the plurality of things because you have one and you have Synergy. Check it out. And I'm gonna check out AMD because they are looking good. They are looking so freaking good. So we are waiting on the launch of the Renoir APUs. Those are supposed to be happening tomorrow on the 21st, but AMD hasn't officially said anything as of yet. We've seen pictures. We kind of have a lot of good indication that they're coming out, but we have no actual word from AMD about official launch date, but we got benchmarks. We got new benchmarks, which are showing that these are just another level of what we could have expected out of AMD. Because if you think about the current APUs that are on the market, the Ryzen 3200 and 3400G, they're eh, like they're Zen Plus CPUs with eh GPUs. It's just like, okay, yeah, that'll work. It's better than Intel's alternative, but it's not necessarily something game changing. Well, the Ryzen 7 Pro 4750G has been benchmarked, and oh my goodness, it's essentially nearly identical to a 3700X. It's almost as if you're getting the CPU that they shipped out in something that they gave out to mass consumers. There is a key difference, but benchmark scores, at least in Geekbench, are nearly identical. Single core score is very close. Multi-core score is a little less, but that has to do with the fact that it only has a quarter of the L3 cache. But for some people, not having that L3 cache might not be enough for you and you actually need the dedicated chip. But for those who don't, this performance is really, really admirable. But we also got benchmarks of the integrated graphics that are coming out and that yes my friends the vega 8 gpu when overclocked can go toe-to-toe with dedicated graphics cards not necessarily current gen dedicated graphics cards but a 4700g was overclocked and with the frequency of the gpu being at 2.4 gigahertz it was able to hit 5100 points in 3d mark fire strike which is better than an rx 550 which scores about less than 4000 so it seems to be around a gtx 950 that we're getting out of this 4700g which just it's on a cpu it's it's just it's 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 smaller than this. This is an SSD. You're, you're getting a full CPU and GPU in this size. That is crazy. AMD making some goodness come out with all of that. Let me know if you're hyped for the Renoir APUs. I know that I am desperately, actually, I'm working on the PC that I'm going to be putting them in right here. This has a 30 or this has a 2400G. The 4700G is going right in here, I'll tell you. But I can only have one PlayStation 5 sitting right here, at least according to new code that was scrounged out from PlayStation's website on PlayStation Direct, they found that there is a error message that says you can only purchase one version of the PS5 console, disc or digital, you have already added one PS5 console to your cart. This likely will apply to ordering from Sony directly. It may or may not apply to third party orders such as with Amazon or Best Buy or the like. It might indeed be that because we've talked about previously how Sony may only have a certain limited amount of PlayStation 5s available at launch, even if they are ramping up production. Only one, friends, which depending on the pricing might be sad or that might just be really, really reasonable. Yeah, I can only afford one $700 console Sony. Thanks. I had to sell a lot of blood in order to be able to afford this. And no amount of blood selling, I had to go with that transition, uh, is going to get 
Huawei back in TSMC's good graces, TSMC confirming that it will stop selling to High Silicon, which is the subsidiarity of Huawei, on September 14th. This is in coordination with the US government issuing some new agreements and prohibitions with regards to how companies can do business with other companies and Huawei obviously being one of the major ones that is being affected. So as of September 14th, they will no longer be working. This also coincides with the fact that Huawei has been ramping up with SMIC, which is China's fabrication facility and TSMC probably not hurting too much here, even though they have to get rid of one of the largest companies that they're probably working with, considering that they were the number two cell phone manufacturing company in the entire world just a couple of years ago before this whole US government versus Huawei thing went down. Now they've already lost the majority of that business, but Apple coming in and making their own silicon, they're going to be replacing Intel with TSMC, which probably just nets TSMC some big win money. And you can win money if you like to overclock with the new application that is going to be available in the game bar. Actually, it's not a new application. Anyways, EVGA has their precision application, which allows you to control overclocking fan speed, all the like. But now it's integrated in the Windows game bar, which I'm not sure of many people who use this. But for those who do and also want to use EVGA precision, you got it. But you don't got Xbox Live Gold memberships for a year anymore. No, 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 no. Microsoft getting rid of them, scrapping them all together. No one knows exactly why this is happening. However, there is some speculation that this is because Microsoft is just going to be pushing for Game Pass. They all have Game Pass and Game Pass Ultimate. Game Pass giving you the wide library of games, Game Pass Ultimate giving you that library of games, Xbox Live, and then also Project X Cloud for game streaming. So they're probably just trying to simplify the entire thing. They're getting rid of the year subscriptions first because it probably won't be around for an entire year and then rolling out getting rid of the three and one month subscriptions next. That's speculation. But what's not speculation is lab grown meat by KFC. They are working on getting their first lab made chicken nuggets out to you. You want some chicken nuggies that were made in a lab? Of course you do. That's the best thing for everybody as long as it doesn't as long as it has like no weird mutations or anything. Anyways, they are working with a Russian firm in order to get these lab grown nuggies out there and they're hoping to test them in Moscow by fall. I'd try some lab grown nuggies, I'll tell you what. But Twitter's gonna tell you what happened with the Bitcoin hack that went down last week. We talked about it in a previous episode of Hot News that a lot of verified accounts got hacked due to the social engineering scheme that went down with some Twitter employees, Bill Gates, Barack Obama, Elon Musk, all of them getting affected by this. Twitter support now coming out and saying that up to eight of the Twitter accounts that were affected actually also had their data downloaded via your Twitter data tool, which allowed them to export everything. However, Twitter did come out and say that there's a lot of speculation going on, but these were not any of the verified accounts. So this likely does not apply to the big heavy hitters who got affected by all of this. This is likely some other smaller Twitter accounts. However, it's still just as devastating regardless. But that's not the only major thing that happened last week with regards to the internet. Twitter kind of getting on lockdown with verified creators. Cloudflare going down as well, which in case you're not familiar, Cloudflare is the basically gatekeeper to the internet for a lot of different websites. Their outage bringing down a ton of websites, Discord, down detector, Riot Games, Destiny, Patreon, Feedly, Authy, they're all just getting affected and anybody who is using their VPN or their DNS all went down. Anyways, Cloudflare came out and apologized for this, saying that there was a routing issue that happened in Atlanta that caused bad routes across their backbone and then also taking responsibility for this, saying that it's basically his fault as the CEO because they didn't have any backup plans in place. And yeah, kind of if you're the entire, you know, gatekeeper of the internet, you might want to have something like that in place. AWS, Cloudflare, all of these companies have massive, at least filtering of the internet. We go through them, we tunnel through them. And when those things are affected, man, internet's a bad time. But good to see the CEO stepping up and taking responsibility, get it fixed and then move on with our lives. But we can't move on with our lives when we don't have Samsung Galaxy beans in our ears. No, I can't. I refuse to do another episode of Hot News without Galaxy beans. Look at them. They're so beautiful. Well, there's a new promotional video that got leaked out on the internet indicating that these beans will have active noise cancellation. Yes, these are going to be uh, Samsung's combatants against the airpods which you know you can make fun of the airpods for all you want they have they look like little strings coming out and all or like little q-tips that's fine but I, man 
What happens when one of these gets stuck up somebody's nose? All right, how do you yank it out? At least with the AirPods, you have a stock to grab onto. This, like, I, I wedge that deep in my ear canal and woof, I'm just, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be hearing a lot of Spotify for the rest of my life, my friends. But active noise cancellation in beans, but no photographs in space. At least not better ones, because the James Webb telescope was supposed to launch a long time ago, I believe it was 2018, has now once again gotten delayed. It will be launching in October of 2021. It has already experienced a coronavirus related delay. It was supposed to launch in May of this year, then it got delayed till March of next year, and now in even further delay of October 2021. This is absolutely worth waiting for. This is essentially the replacement for the Hubble telescope, which was launched in 1990. So we are 30 years past when we had a telescope put up there to look at the stars. I can only imagine what this thing's gonna bring us. I'm excited and I, I want them to do it right. So I'm waiting for them to do it right. And if you played this game right, it's already over by the time this episode of Hot News is coming out. I just wanna talk about it. Netflix has a movie called The Old Guard coming out with Charlize Theron and they put a video game alongside it. And if you were the best person at this video game on this website, you won a lifetime supply of a Netflix subscription, well, basically 83 years or a thousand months. If you were the best, you had to win on this. I didn't try it. Let me know if you participated in it. And let me know if you have a $10,000 in the bank to afford one of these Black Magic Ursa Mini Pro 12K cameras. Holy crap, Line is confirming on Twitter that he's purchasing five of them. Anyways, they can shoot 12K at 60 FPS, 8K at 110, and 4K at 220 FPS, which is mind boggling obviously, but then comes in at a price of only, only $10,000 for these specs is incredible. Obviously we have to wait and see if there's any uh, issues with it, but 14 stops the dynamic range, 12K sensor, this thing is insane. And what is insane is the fact that Worms Armageddon is 21 years old. I feel really old now. I remember jamming this out when I was a wee little lad with my brother. Anyways, they're getting an update. Yes, there's a new patch that's coming out that gives an increased 70 settings that allows you to play this game more effectively in this current world. So you can check out the patch trailer, patch 3.8, at the link in the video description. But Worms Armageddon, 21 years old, getting updated once more. Wow, this, this brings back a million memories. And I want this episode of Hot News to be a memory to you because it's over. But what's not going to be over is your use of Synergy. Check out the application that allows you to simplify your life on keyboard and mouse to control multiple devices, Linux, Macs, Mac, Windows, whatever have you. I have nostalgia for Worms Armageddon, and I have gone by.